You are listening to Three Kitchens, a member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. Join your hosts, Heather Dyer, Sarah Samsundrum, and Aaron Walker. You never know what they're going to make next. This episode is brought to you by Park Power, your friendly local utility providers in Alberta, offering internet, electricity, and natural gas with low rates, awesome service, and profit sharing with local charities. Winter is coming, and energy usage for all Albertans will be increasing. So now is a great time for listeners to look at their utility bills and ensure they are on the best plan. Albertans have a choice of utility providers. Park Power is happy to provide free, no-obligation comparisons. If you decide to switch providers, it's easy, and you can feel good knowing you are supporting a local business and helping to give back to our communities with your utility bill. Learn more at parkpower.ca. Hello and Happy New Year. Welcome to today's episode of Three Kitchens Podcast. I'm Erin Walker and I'm joined here with the amazing Sarah Soma Sundra. Happy New Year, guys. And Heather Dyer. Happy New Year. <laughs> Hello, Wow, ladies. what a nice introduction. New and fresh and we're all pumped for what's to come, right? Oh, okay. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> what's to come? Uh... I was just talking yesterday with a friend about, I was like, make your vision board, get your, get your vision board ready. And he oh, was like, good idea. Uh, we got to do our new year's vision boards, guys. That's right. That's a good idea. You see, when yeah. I say that, all I want to do is get together with you guys with like a stack of magazines and glue and scissors and a poster board. Because for yeah. me, a vision board is physical, not digital. Although you've yeah. been telling me that you can do mm-hmm. digital ones. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to cut things out of a magazine and glue it on something and I said you don't have to you can just create a Pinterest board and <laughs> save images of stuff and then just look at it every so often add to it change it yeah, yeah. so much go. easier right yeah and you don't have the clutter of the th- I don't want the paper thing hanging around <laughs> I got enough junk kids crafts and yeah instead of finding a picture of Roy Choi in a magazine right <laughs> yeah you can there you go. digitally get it she <laughs> wants Roy Choi in her vision board yeah <laughs> Just cooking with him. Put it out there to the universe. Exactly. want to connect with Roy Choi. Yeah. So if anyone listened to uh, a couple episodes back, I made Beef Wellington before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And this kind of seemed to inspire at least a couple of people to make it. Inspired me. Oh, Mm -hmm. yes, it was delicious. And yeah, my husband made me make extra. I knew it was going to be too much. I said, (laughs) but I ended up eating the last piece last night. Oh, it is good as leftover. Yeah, it was. It good. does hold up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yours was beautiful. We'll post a picture on our yeah. socials because yours that was, was gorgeous, like photogenic. Beef it Wellington. looked like it should have been in a magazine, mm-hmm. or it should have been on Chefy's website. There, old Gordon <laughs> Ramsay. <laughs> old Gordon would be proud, man. He yeah, would have been proud of yours. And then a friend of mine, my friend Lisa, commented on one of our posts and said, "Can you teach me how to make it? Let's do this together." So right. I went to her place, and together. We spent the afternoon drinking wine and making Wellington and maybe we drank too much wine and it was, it was not as beautiful as Sarah's, but it was tasty for sure. And we had a lot of fun. Nice. Um, one lesson, like fun. Here's a lesson I learned mm. based on Lisa's experience. So before I arrived, she had made the Duxel, which is the mushroom kind of paste, very important component to get right. I would just tell you because, okay, when I made it, I put it in the food processor to kind of mince those right. mushrooms into right. very tiny pieces. She just chopped hers with a knife. The pieces were not small enough. They did not reduce down to like a paste. It was too crumbly and loose. Okay. So it didn't Ooh. hold together. Like when you sliced into it, the mushrooms kind of fell out and it didn't hold it together. Okay. So oh. that's that's a very important piece, which we didn't really realize because we had, I'm sure you did too, Sarah, made it nice and tight, like I, nice paste yeah. out of it. Paste, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So in hindsight, we both, Lisa and I both said it was the mushroom. The mushroom didn't hold. So yeah. you do need to make sure they're minced really small and reduced down to like, you can pretty make much it a spread paste. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotta be it's spreadable. Paste. It's ah. important. So for those of us who were new to Duxel, <laughs> now we know. <laughs> what it should be yeah fantastic so, what yeah, great so advice go. I haven't done and it yet but uh yeah. it, it is on the list so good my advice is to make a lot of that duck salad because that stuff is delicious 
Yes. I think it, there is something to be said about the meat to duxel ratio. <laughs> and uh, the other thing that I added to mine was I added a crepe. And I think, right. um, so Heather mm. had asked if it had changed much in the flavor. I didn't use chives, like Gordon Ramsay said. I used spring onions. And I think one of the things that it does is that it keeps the liquid or Juice. everything sealed. <laughs> Yeah. The moisture yeah. in, right. The moisture in from not a lot of moisture came out of the pastry in the ah, oven. It all uh-huh. kind of stayed in. So that was, mm. I think, a nice little layer to add on. And it doesn't take like two seconds to do. Oh, right. that's interesting. Because I hadn't done that in when I made it. I did not do a crepe. And I still kind of stand by now having done the individual portion ones and mm. the larger oh, yeah. one, single one. Mm. Individual to me, it was more work, took longer, right. but to serve it was so much simpler. You're just mm. putting that nice little bundle on the plate. You didn't have to slice, try to slice that. I mean, it didn't help that ours was a little crumbly, um, right. didn't slice well. Sarah's did, obviously, if you look at the photo, it sliced nicely, but um, the individual little portions I would do again. I like the individual portions. I just didn't do it because you said it was more work yeah <laughs> it was more work feeling i was not feeling it so come on it it's christmas only day. christmas day like yeah. you don't have spare time come on uh, <laughs> shame on you isn't it all about cooking <laughs> Like, I mean, it was my laziest Christmas and uh, we did, or my daughter wanted to make hazelnut spread and banana wontons like oh, we yeah. did in the, yes. the wonton cups that we did mm-hmm. in what, what episode was that? The last one. New Year's menu. Yeah. The New Year's it was menu last camp. year. So it was, a, yes. it's hard to yes. remember, <laughs> right? Two weeks, two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago. So yeah, we did those and that was like the simplest simplest dessert I've ever done for Christmas but that's what they wanted so I'm just like you know what we're gonna keep it all simple and there was no party it was just us yeah that's we didn't even do dessert at all Mm -hmm. we just had our stack of baking containers oh yeah we got together with family (laughs) exact but every day it was like hmm what's for after breakfast snack treats from the containers oh what's for after lunch snack treats from the containers yeah what's for dessert tonight (laughs) after before in between yeah (laughs) whatever (laughs) and hey listen if anybody out there is inspired to cook what we've cooked or want to try one of these recipes and if you do take a photo post it on your social tag three kitchens podcast or email us a little, you can do a little audio clip right on your phone with the audio mm-hmm. recorder and send it to us. And maybe we'll put it in one of our episodes. Yes, love please. That would be so it. fun. Just yeah. like Lisa and I made something. This is my special guest from Three Kitchens Podcast, helping me with a one-on-one lesson <laughs> with Beef Wellington. And I'm no teacher. And Lisa is an amazing cook all on her own, so don't let her fool you. Why, thank you, Heather. It's, it is true. <laughs> and if you do too, then we would love to include Why it. don't you give the listeners the um, email address? Three Kitchens Podcast at gmail.com. So easy, guys. Yeah. <laughs> We're so excited. Please do. Somebody, somebody please do, because it'd be so fun. It'll be fun. Tell us what you're making. Even if it failed, even if you say, listen, yeah. your instructions we're shit <laughs> i mean i hope that's not the case but we we just want the we want to hear what how it works <laughs> the gloopy gloop <laughs> yeah the gloopy gloop of the strudel i want someone to make a strudel and tell us how gloopy their gloop was exactly <laughs> <laughs> i have not attempted it myself but i want someone else to we're waiting for aaron's screen to unmute. she's hello oh, my interconnection is you are. unstable yes it's more than my internet connection that's unstable. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. What are you cooking? What do you what have you got for us? <sighs> so we had a super hot summer, which allowed me to grow a huge squash plant. Um, mm-hmm. And so I should dig back and find some pictures. These squashes took over my garden. Mm-hmm. It was crawling all the way to my back fence. It took over the bench that sits in front of our garden. The squash <laughs> nice. was like the plant that was going to come and attack you in the night. You felt like if you sat still for too long, it would wrap a tendril around you and take you away. <laughs> like, little shop of horrors. <laughs> you exactly. didn't say- yeah, that's right. Thank you. That's the reference I'm looking for. Feed me, Aaron. Feed me. 
So I was able to harvest off, Ooh, what did I get? Like five or six grocery store plus sized butternut squash. Mm. So they did not ripen on the vine because the weather changed. It got cold. The plants died. So I harvested them sort of as late as I could. And then I took them inside and put them in my basement to ripen up. And so they're called a winter squash. I'm assuming because they take a long time to ripen up and then oh, you I see. Them in the winter. No, okay. I eat mine far too soon. You gave it to me in the fall and I yes. just like made a soup out of it that was delicious. I Ooh. roasted that thing whole in the oven for like all afternoon and then I blended it up and made soup Ooh, out of it. And nice. I didn't know that I was supposed to leave it longer to ripen, <laughs> but it was still good. <laughs> Maybe it's just because they keep and you can use them in the winter oh, so that you have year round. Yeah, that could be because it certainly wasn't underripe. Like it was good. But yeah. if you think of like a zucchini is called a summer squash because mm. zucchinis, they're not keeping. You harvest yeah. them and you eat them. And mm-hmm. at the rate that they grow, you harvest them continually, you eat them continually, and then you never want to see a zucchini again for another yeah. eight months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whereas right. these, they can sit around for a while. You can keep them in a cool room or just you know, in your basement. I've got three big ones sitting down there waiting. Nice. Nice. Waiting to get chopped up. Waiting for this episode. Waiting for now. So I would like to make a butternut squash ravioli. Ah, okay. Because I keep hearing about pumpkin ravioli and I think that sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. And last year, actually in season one, Heather made these amazingly delicious roasted butternut squash with the salted lemons when we were camping. And they were just out of all the things that I ate while we were camping, I loved the steak and I loved the other stuff, but chicken and the everything. chicken and everything, but I just could not stop going back and eating more vegetables. Mm. And they were like the highlight of that meal. They, mm-hmm. That flavor has stuck in there. So I would like to make my filling by roasting the butternut squash with the lemons. So I'm going to ask Heather how she put that together because that's I want to do like the exact same thing (laughs) so that that's what my filling tastes like. Mm. And then I would like to just make some homemade raviolis because I have that ravioli making thing that came with a pasta bite. Right. Now, mm-hmm. I have a bit of a problem. Does anybody know where the pasta bike it's is in, right It's now? in my pantry. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> so before we got on to do this episode today, I looked Uh-oh. in the corner where I thought it was. And I was like, huh, well, maybe I moved it for Christmas. So I went through my pantries because I organized my pantry. I was like, oh, well, it's not in here. Well, maybe I put it somewhere else in my kitchen. Oh, (laughs) So I was upstairs and downstairs and in the storage room and in the lot. I was like, where did it go? You should have sent the message out. Oh, no, this was much more fun because I was hoping it was (laughs) fun. I was hoping it was somewhere and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to bring this into our conversation. And if I can't find it, nobody has it. This will be really interesting. Right. (laughs) You'll be doing it by hand. You'll be rolling it out. (laughs) <laughs> and cutting them out and then this episode will just go and it'll be it'll be the end <laughs> can we can we put that little sound effect in there Aaron? can you put one of those record scratch yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay Fun. phew the pasta bike and all the stuff there it's got it yes all right i do so i'm gonna need that back okay and because <laughs> i really don't want to make this by hand Making the pasta that I made, was that season one, the greeny fettuccine? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mm -hmm. that was so good. It Mm -hmm. was so tasty Mm -hmm. and it was easy to do. Like it did not take a ton of time to make your own homemade pasta. Right. I think making the ravioli is going to be a little bit finickier, but I've got that mold that you roll out your pasta dough, you lie your dough on top, you put your filling in, and then you roll your second sheet on top, and then you roll with a rolling pin, and it cuts it all into the little pieces that you want. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. And it's going to give it that nice little edge and hopefully make it faster than like, I mean, these wonderful people out there who do these pasta things. I love you. And I think you're amazing. Beautiful. I saw somebody making molds that had like little shapes of filling. Oh, Salty Seattle. Yeah. Salty Seattle's one of them. Oh, Uh, She's like a whole different level. Are you kidding me? 
her oh. dinosaurs stand yes. up in their pasta. That's amazing. I love watching her Instagram feed. I would never, ever attempt any of it, but it's so beautiful to look no. at. So we'll see. I'm going to try and make these these raviolis with this butternut squash filling. Mm. I think there's a recipe on the back of the ravioli um, press cutter thingy. Thing? <laughs> I'll give it a better name next episode. For the dough, you mean? Yeah, I think there's a dough recipe. So I'll look at that and maybe make that for the dough. Do you want to borrow the salty, what is it? Oh, pasta pretty, please. What's it called? Pasta, yeah, that's it. Oh, I forgot you had the book. That's right. I'll just pass it to you. Use it if you want to. Mine as well. I'll take a peek at it. Maybe Mm -hmm. I'll, maybe I'll use something in the dough to make it colorful. (laughs) <laughs> I don't Fine. know yeah. I, I, I <laughs> if you could see my face <laughs> I don't feel super convinced I'll do that <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to start too high up for the right. new year because then it's only downhill so let's just <laughs> <laughs> let's start uh, down here and go from there and yeah I'm gonna I think this will be really tasty in a pasta and then I just want to go super simple with the sauce I just want brown butter and yum. sage sauce Mm -hmm. with this salted butternut squash I just feel like that sounds like perfect weather for that because it is freezing outside guys it's like minus 27 I don't know what degree celsius and it's so hard to keep warm even in the house because that cold comes right through those big windows right (laughs) so that that sounds like a perfect my drafty little old house is definitely (laughs) I hear you (laughs) I hear you, Erin. I almost can't believe that I'm thinking like, oh, this sounds so good and I want to eat it because all I've been doing is eating and I feel like I need to just fast for a few days because yes. like, I'm so sick of, I'm actually sick of food and sick of eating, but this sounds so good that, oh, it's perking me up again. Yeah. My fast lasted about 12 hours. <laughs> I got, I got Heather's tummy to grumble. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, Heather. Every morning I wake up and I go, I'm going to be good today. And then every night I have about seven dinners. Yeah. I'm not like, I'm just. When did you make it till the other morning, Heather? You woke up and said, I'm not touching any sweets or snacks today. And then I ate in the Nanaimo bar at like 9 a.m. <laughs> it is oh, Christmas oh. willpower. Yes. We have so much stuff that it just is sitting there and I want to toss it out, but then I feel kind of guilty just tossing that out too. So just do a leftover dinner. Leftover sweets. That's what I got though is sweets. Yeah. Yuck. <laughs> well, I'm sick of it. Yeah, I know. My kids, the our diet is awful right now. Whatever, yeah. we'll get over it and it's cheese so, and crackers. We'll start pooping we- again next year. <laughs> <laughs> This is next year. And <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> a sugar no detox. Sugar. It's going to hurt. Like coming off yeah. the sugar is going to hurt. Yeah, oh, yeah. Gonna it's going to be painful. We'll come off the sugar with some tasty ravioli. It'll yeah. be veggies and yeah. carbs. It sounds, it sounds good, though. It sounds butter. Healthy, yeah. healthy. healthy. <laughs> I- All the food groups that we need. Yes. Okay, so Sarah, <clears throat> if I could get my pasta maker... Yes. I will run off and make these raviolis. Of course you can. (laughs) Awesome. Can't wait to eat it. Sounds good, Erin. We look forward Uh to this. Yum, yum. This episode of Three Kitchens is brought to you by the Alberta Association of Optometrists, proudly celebrating a century of caring for Albertans. It happens. Many people don't call their optometrist first for urgent eye care when they need it. From spring cleaning mishaps to winter eye infections, if you or your family have an eye emergency, doctors of optometry are trained to diagnose, treat, and prescribe medications. No referral necessary. And just a reminder, Alberta Health coverage is available towards your urgent eye care appointment. To find an optometrist in your area, visit optometrist.ab.ca. The Alberta Association of Optometrists represents almost 800 doctors of optometry in over 80 communities across the province. Members are highly trained, regulated health professionals who provide primary eye health and vision care to Albertans. Learn more at optometrists.ab.ca. Hello, listeners. Welcome back. (laughs) We should get down to what we came here for. (laughs) Down to business. business. The business of the ravioli Mm -hmm. it was good business well good business for me yeah i want to know what everyone thought about we got dinner delivered yesterday dinner well you added to your dinner i added Mm -hmm. to my dinner because i have to have meat (laughs) but yeah sorry i didn't also bring a t-bone steak to your oh come (laughs) on Aaron. (laughs) 
So Sarah, you added it to your dinner. You got a dozen raviolis. Okay, it was freaking delicious. The whole family loved it, Ooh, which good. is and, and Craig was talking about, oh look, this is another vegetarian meal that we can add to our plate. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I always will have that piece of steak for myself because I made a piece of steak to go with it. Right. Um the creaminess of the filling, like never tasted anything, was so silky. It was, wasn't it? That sauce that you put was so simple. Did you add more butter? Did you brown it? I, of course I added more butter. No, I didn't brown it. <laughs> so nice. good. And now I just want to know how to make it. And I really, really want to know if we can freeze it. That would be such a bonus. If we could make a big batch and then take it out whenever, right? Yes. Heather? I'll just tell my quick little backstory for this because I was mm. making a ham oh, yesterday. Right. <laughs> this is not my favorite. I, that's no, putting it nicely. I hate ham. I, a roast ham is like yuck to me. I don't <laughs> like ham. Well, tell the listeners the size of this ham. This thing was, so what happened was my husband had to work Christmas Eve at the fire hall and they um, were discussing in advance, what should we eat for dinner? It's Christmas Eve. We'll make something nice. And he voted for ham because he never gets to eat it because I don't make it because I don't like it. And he really loves it. <laughs> but he got voted out. They had prime rib. The guy's went to the store, bought him a seven pound ham seven and handed it ham. over in a gift bag to him <laughs> as a gift for Christmas because they felt he was pouting that he didn't get his ham dinner. And so he brought it home. He walks to work, as you know, through the park, 40 minute walk <laughs> in the deep freeze. Like what was it like on Christmas morning, minus 40 or something before the sun comes up? It's like yeah. effing cold. He walked mm -hmm. home carrying his ham. <laughs> In his arms, like his baby, like baby, his Christmas baby. Yes. <laughs> so he brings it home and he hands it to me. As soon as he comes to the door, he's like, look what I got. And he was so happy. He's like, can you cook this for me? And I look in there and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so anyway, I committed to making this ham and mm. my kids like it too. So, I mean, all the, the whole family was really happy about having ham except me. But mm -hmm. I lucked out yeah. because it just happened to be the day that Aaron was bringing ravioli. And I was like, yes, that's Yay! my dinner. Yep. There, see, so, the mind meld worked. You sent it, me like uh, the invisible signal that told me make yes. ravioli. It was <laughs> perfect for me because I didn't have to worry about what am I going to eat besides, you know, I had there was vegetables and salad to go with the ham, mm -hmm. but I had ravioli instead. So I got to yes. eat almost a whole dozen myself. Just about. I had what? like, I think I had seven oh, yeah, of them two. and the family mm. had the rest. And that was my mm. dinner when <laughs> Sarah made that awesome little video mm. and there were three on the plate and I was laughing over the text message as if anyone would just eat three ravioli in one sitting. Bah, like that's ridiculous. And I was like, like I did <laughs> only ate three. <laughs> I was like, oh, you poor thing. Like, <laughs> Like, oh, that's really sad for you because I did not care that much. I was like, no, no, you guys eat your ham because I'm eating all mm -hmm. these. Okay, so I felt the same as you, Sarah. Like, it was so soft. Mm -hmm. Like, just melt in your mouth butternut yeah. squash in the middle of it. And even the noodles. Like, I am so... Mm -hmm unaccustomed to fresh pasta yeah mm -hmm. like I've had it like a couple of times I think it's not something we really usually have even in a restaurant I bet you it has dried longer right I, would, I think I so. would think because I would I would think they would make it much earlier and then have yeah. it all ready to go by yeah. the time you know the customers come in so it's even hard to tell when you put it in water so Aaron brought it to us not boiled it wasn't cooked yet so That's we right. had to boil it in the water and we were like how long should we do this and you can't tell exactly when to pull it out right I kept taking mine out and biting the corners to see if it oh, was that's okay, how I figured okay. out for mine I was like well I think that's good enough and how long did you end up doing yours would you say four to five minutes again I tend to be really bad about timing things I know I'm like oh I should time this and then that's the last time I think those words and I just do mm -hmm. <laughs> I did three to four minutes I think it was five yeah, I waited for them to float, but then I had a pan ready with the sauce and the butter. Mm -hmm. And then I took it out of there and then I put it in the pan. So it cooked for an extra minute after. Yeah. In okay. the sauce. I did the same thing. I mm -hmm. transferred them from the boiling water into my frying pan of butter right. with sage and garlic. And I just flipped them in there until they kind of sizzled through and then popped them into plates. 
All right, let's hear this. I, 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 I want to know how easy this is to make because, oh, that silkiness of the, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I don't think I've ever yeah. had butternut squash ravioli or any pumpkin kind of ravioli, a squash ravioli that's silky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I couldn't believe how it blended up like that. So what, how did I do this? Magic. How did you do it, Erin? Ta-da! What all sorcery right. is this? First of all, it was the butternut squash from my garden. So right. I'm going to put a huge stock on that. How would you describe squash when you haven't mushed it and smashed it up? Like stringy or like it's got a texture to it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can, yeah, for sure. It can. Yeah. Kind of fibrous. Yeah, Thank fibrous, you for yeah. the word, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> My work is done. I will now just coast through the rest of the episode. I, I have nothing else to contribute. <laughs> yeah, as soon as okay. I cut these open and started uh, slicing them and dicing them up for this, it was amazing how smooth it already was. So oh, I would say okay. that a good chunk of the texture and flavor was due to the fact that these were homegrown veggies. Mm, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just can't beat that, right? So I chopped up two of the butternut squash that I had. Once I blended it all down and everything, it was four cups of filling that I had okay. that I ended up making. But it was a big amount when it went into the cast iron pan. So okay. I mixed, uh, it was the butternut squash. I put... The salted lemon, I put a quarter of a salted lemon in and diced that up. I don't think there was really much else that I put in there for the roasting pan. And then I just tossed it in the oven. I put tin foil over it to try and keep all the moisture in. And I let it roast at 400 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes. It wasn't a long time. It went Did you pretty salt quick. Them? She put salted lemon in there. Oh, right. Salted lemon. So that's, yeah. that's what L it's Listeners, in. if you use your salted lemons, you don't yes. add more salt. Don't. Unless you yeah, taste it salty. and you feel like you need a little extra something, but mm -hmm. yeah, just that's your salt. <laughs> so, and if you don't know how to make a salted lemon, really simple, delicious, go check out, what is it? Our third episode Heather did. It was something like that's that. That's the second or the third one. Yeah. 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 Check out the easy peasy lemon salty. It's a staple ingredient. If you're going to cook anything, yeah, anything <laughs> that we ever talk about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I kind of roasted this up the day before because I wanted it to cool. Because if I was using hot filling on mm -hmm. pasta dough, that would have been a disaster. Right. I got out my immersion blender, blended up the squash. And to every two cups of squash, I added one egg to it. Because I looked online to see like what do people normally do for their pumpkin filling. This helps bind it together, right? I think mm. so. So it's not too runny. Yeah. You know what? Just going off of what other people have done. There's a reason they've done that. I don't have to understand mm -hmm. it, but lots of people right. did it. So I'm like, well, let's do that too. <laughs> it worked. We've mm -hmm. we've come we've come a ways from the times when Aaron wanted to know all the science behind <laughs> the reason for the egg or whatever. It is it yeah. is 2022, and I am <laughs> fresh said. out of fax. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's my slogan for the year. I love it. Okay. Uh, so the filling was really easy to make. The ravioli, super easy to make. Okay, you did the whole thing by hand, right? I mixed it by hand. I kneaded it by hand. I rolled it out using my pasta machine. Mm -hmm. And then I used my ravioli maker. So Aaron did a whole bunch of videos. And we're going to post some um, so that you guys can see what she did. But uh I finally understand how to use that ravioli maker because I it was always in the same bag as her pasta maker and I never opened it and I'm like, oh, I wonder how this works. But now I know. Yeah, hmm. I've mm. never used it before. So is this unusual to do it all by hand? Like you typically would a normal human being like Sarah or me <laughs> do this in a mixer? I feel like like... Or could I? I guess my question me is out as a not normal person. So I don't know if I want to answer that question. You caught that, <laughs> did you? No. I <laughs> Could I use a mixer? To In the past, the past, I've used a stand mixer for making pasta dough. Okay. And when I made the fettuccine, I used a stand mixer because that's what the instruction said. This one, I used the recipe off the back of the box of my ravioli maker because I thought, hey, why not? <laughs> if it comes on the back of the box and it gives me a recipe and step-by-step -step instructions then that's what I'm going to do. This recipe was sort of different from other pasta recipes I've made. In this one, we add all the wet ingredients and 
mix them together really good. And then you start adding your flour one cup at a time until you get a dough. Mm. And so in other pasta recipes, you know, they always have like their flour on the counter and the nice little well in the middle and then they crack their eggs into it. Okay. Yeah. Everything runs away because your house is tilted. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. So after I read this recipe, I was like, yeah, I'm using this one because it doesn't have me doing crazy stuff like that. Okay. I take it back then. I take it back. (laughs) See, I'm coming around ladies. I'm coming around. (laughs) We like when you do crazy stuff. It's fun for us. (laughs) I'm glad someone's enjoying it. Um, (laughs) So yeah, two eggs quarter cup of olive oil, half a cup of water, half a teaspoon of salt, and three cups of flour. Simple enough. Yeah. It kneaded up really nicely. It looked really soft. Oh, it was soft. It was like really nice pasta dough. I don't know. Mm. I also, so on the back of this, it has the weights, not just the measurements, which was the second reason why I chose to do this because it sounded easy and it had the weights, which we have discussed Mm -hmm. in the past is Mm -hmm. often better for when we're trying to make Mm -hmm. any kind of dough or bread item. For the first time, especially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, it all came together good. It was still pretty sticky after I had added all the flour, but it says like, just put the dough on your counter with it excess flour and just keep kneading until it comes together and it came together really nice like how many minutes maybe between five and ten minutes of kneading it oh, really that's wasn't it. bad okay, that's not too bad okay no, there was no okay. kind of craziness involved in this it was quite relaxed okay. <laughs> So the beautiful thing about my house being so old is my countertops have no real lip on them to clasp that pasta maker to. Mm -hmm. So I had to have my drawer open so that I could clasp (laughs) my pasta maker. And then I had tons of flour and junk (laughs) all in my drawer. Anyway, whatever. It worked fine. Did the thing where you roll it through the pasta maker a couple times and you fold it. For the mm-hmm. first three settings so that it laminates the dough. Did they no, say No, I that didn't follow in the... any instructions no. after this other than looking at the diagrams visually. <laughs> okay. Because I had okay. pasta experience. I yeah. had past uh, experience. Past uh, uh, experience. Uh, ah, ah, good one, good one. Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> this is it takes a little to entertain us. It takes little to entertain <laughs> It said roll it out with a rolling pin until it's translucent on the package directions. I was like, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not doing this by rolling pin. So I passed it through and I went up to setting seven out of nine on my pasta maker because I kind of feel like you want a bit of a thicker dough on a ravioli because you want it to be kind of chewy when you bite into it Mm -hmm. and it's got to hold this stuff you've made. I separated the dough into four pieces that were about 160 grams for each ball of dough. And then just kind of kept the ones that I wasn't using on the counter with a damp towel over top of them with each ball of dough, put it through, did the laminating, rolled it out to seven. It made a big long strip that was enough to be the bottom and the top for my ravioli. And it looked almost translucent. You laid Mm. it down on the frame of the ravioli maker. You have a little mold that pushes indents into your raviolis before Mm -hmm. you put your filling in so that you've kind Mm -hmm. of pre-stretched the dough where you're going to put your little ball of filling. Right. And then using my cookie scoop, which I think is a tablespoon scoop. I think that's the volume of it. Cookie scooped filling. And then with the second piece of dough, which was just waiting there, so convenient. You just place Mm -hmm. it on top, press it down with your hands, and then use your rolling pin over top and it seals the two together. You dump about on a tray, slice them up, and you're done. Nice. Now, one mistake I did make is they suggested that they sit on a generously floured surface for an hour, and then you're supposed to turn them upside down and let them sit on a very floured surface for another hour. So it suggests Mm. two hours of drying. Um, I was like, oh, a floured surface, I can just use parchment. Not a good idea. Because the moisture, by the time I got home after I delivered your guys once, the moisture was so much that it started to stick to the parchment paper and I couldn't lift up the raviolis without ripping the dough on top so I would say definitely use like a put a whole bunch of flour down on a baking sheet instead of using parchment because that will help and aid the drying process because I just didn't think about it I just assumed and yeah me too I left them on the parchment you gave it to me on and they were kind of stuck so when I pulled them off they kind of just 
they didn't open, but they kind of made weird shapes. Yes, <laughs> yeah. like, yes. More yeah. like little Same. dumplings. Yeah. Like they kind of mm-hmm. I was scared that they were going to break. I know. But didn't they didn't. Though. Yeah. yeah, did not matter. Yeah. They taste just as delicious. Yeah. And this yeah. dough recipe was more than enough. I got seven dozen raviolis oh, wow. out of this. Holy moly. Okay. And you had enough squash? That oh. was, I wanted to use up all of my squash filling. So I mm-hmm. just kept making ravioli until the squash filling was gone. And I ended up having more dough than ravioli filling at the end of the day. More dough. Wow. Hmm. So the recipe was more than enough, which was really nice. Cause I was a little worried. I'd have to make more than one batch of dough, which is always kind of my like oh I don't want to have to do that yeah Mm -hmm. but uh yeah it was really easy but I have to say I love that you could taste the lemon in it It was very very lemony was like yeah I don't know like it just elevated it to something Mm -hmm. really special because it wasn't just a squash ravioli which is perfectly delightful (laughs) but the Mm -hmm. lemons it was like oh this is something like I was really happy with the flavor coming through those salted lemons with squash yeah lemon and squash together yeah yum it is the best combination Mm -hmm. so anyone who wants to make any type of ravioli totally get yourself a ravioli maker with press because it is fast and easy and yum 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 sounds good thanks Erin yeah thank you (laughs) good job I love those yeah they were good oh I'm glad you liked them And now for the fine print. We at Three Kitchens gratefully acknowledge we are telling these stories in the traditional territories of the Treaty 7 Nations in Southern Alberta and the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. We honor the rich tradition of oral storytellers on this land who have come before us. You can find pictures and recipe links on Instagram and Facebook at Three Kitchens Podcast. If you like and subscribe on your podcast player, that helps more people find us. I didn't think I liked squash, but that was good.